The beach chairs are ready, the tent is set, and we're ready for baseball as the Harwich Mariners head to Lowell Park to take on the Katuit Kettleers. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Kettle Talk, the official pregame show of the Katuit Kettleers. I'm John Perez. Katuit is two and a half games behind Hyannis for the final playoff spot, and it's getting pretty late in the season. Those two teams met on Sunday evening in Hyannis, and let's see how it played out. Katua taking on Hyannis in the fourth installment of the Barnstable Patriot Cup. Second pitch of the game, Quinn Brody from Stanford smokes a ball to right. It's a leadoff home run, and the Kettleers leap out at front 1-0 on Brody's second jack of the year. Matt Ruppenthal from Vanderbilt made his first start since June 22nd, and in the bottom of the first, Hyannis would strike back. Dylan Busby from Florida State laces a fastball high and deep to right center and over the fence to even the game at one. Bottom three, Ford Proctor at the plate with Treg Habercorn at second. Proctor lofts the ball to right center. Cal Stevenson can't make the diving grab. Habercorn has to wait for the ball to drop to judge it, and he gets a late start. He starts to run, goes right through the stop sign, and gets pegged at the plate by third baseman Jordan Pierce to keep the game tied at one. Eddie Mull from George Washington came in and was solid. Two and two-thirds shutout innings. He struck out three, including Dylan Busby to end the seventh. Top of the eighth after Brody doubled to right. Arizona bound. Cal Stevenson hits a liner to center. Habercorn misplays it. Brody puts it into fourth gear and beats out the throw. 2-1 Katuit. Bottom eight. Stevenson not only does it with the stick, he does it with the arm. Call Stajahar at the plate with the runner on third, and he lifts the ball to center. Stevenson settles under it and fires a BB to the plate. A nice scoop by the catcher, Tim Susnera, who applies the tag on Chris Cullen to get Katuit out of the jam. Josh Robertson would pitch a scoreless ninth, and the Kettleers will win this one 2-1. Two one. You know, if you've got any chance to be one of the better teams in the Cape, you got to win on the road, and that would be true anywhere. And, you know, our pitching tonight was really good. We had used, you know, what did we use, three, four guys? Four guys, I guess, and they all threw the ball really well. Struggled a little bit defensively a couple of times, but uh, Stevenson bailed us out there in the, in the eighth inning. So, uh, yeah, it's a great Cape League game, or like I told them, great baseball game anywhere. So I'm really pleased with the way they play. I mean, we've been winning a lot of close games and uh, overall just playing really well. So I think that uh, in and of itself helps the uh, atmosphere and it's good. We're definitely on the upswing. I mean, obviously today uh, had the double that scored me and then saved the game on the throw. Um, kept us from extras, which was nice. Um, yeah, just huge. He gets on base a lot, plays really good defense. Uh, so he's been a big factor in the way we're playing right now. I think it's always fun when you come into situations like that. Um, you know, you get to show what you're made of, especially when, you know, 3-1 counts, not a common thing to come into. But our team needed it. It was a big spot, and I'm just happy I got the job done. Yeah, definitely. So um, they kind of assigned some roles from time to time. And earlier in the year, Coach Roberts said that I was most likely going to be a late inning guy and just come in and, and hopefully get some strikeouts like I've been able to do lately. And um, it hasn't been too hard to adjust to. You know, in school I started and came in relief, but I just try to keep that competitive mentality coming in late in the game, and that's kind of been able to pay off lately. So the Kettleers and the Harbor Hawks meet two more times, one more time here at Lowell Park and one more time at McKeon Park, just seven miles away in Hyannis. But with that said, that takes care of Hyannis. Katuit welcomes the Harwich Mariners today in their own backyard. The last time that they played, Harwich won, and Harwich continues to be the best team in the entire league. But they do have some flaws, particularly stemming from their lineup. Their offense has been suspect, and let's take a closer look. They have scored the second least amount of runs in the league. The only team to score less is Chatham, and there you see the record in one-run games and one-nothing games. But of course, in baseball, if the pitching is there, you'll be okay, and Harwich has been more than just okay. They've been stellar, particularly B.J. Myers. And Myers, in his last appearance, seven innings only allowed two runs on three hits. That was the first time in two starts where he actually gave up a run. He hasn't gone less than seven innings in any of his outings either. So that's what's on tap for today. Let's take a look back to Sunday, and here's how everything played out. We had a couple of ties on the evening. 
Orleans and Brewster were deadlocked after nine. Remember, there were no lights at Brewster, so that game was called. Adam Hazley from Virginia, one for four with two RBIs for Brewster. Zach Hagan from North Carolina, one for three with a run driven in. Born over Yarmouth, Dennis, Jake Magnum from Mississippi State broke a 1-1 tie in the bottom of the eighth. Justin Yurchek from Binghamton followed that up with an RBI single, two. Kennesaw State's Michael Jabrell, six innings, two hits, and a run. He struck out five. Falmouth over Wareham. Deacon Lee put from Florida continues to rake. Two for two with a pair of RBIs. The other tie was in Chatham. They called this one after 12 innings. Joe Dunin from NC State drove in a run for the Mariners. Pat Mathis drove in the other run for the Anglers. So here's how the race is heating up. Harwich still the top team in the East. YD creeping up. Orleans, Brewster, and Chatham rounded out. For the West, Falmouth, winners of six in a row are the Juggernaut, Wareham and Bourne scratching and clawing for second. Katua picks up a game on Hyannis with a win at McKeon Park on Sunday evening. So those are the scores and the standings, and the man standing to my left from the national champion, Coastal Carolina baseball team, Jason Billis. And Jason, I'd have to imagine that that's something, besides winning an actual World Series in the major leagues, that's got to be right up there, and that thrill and just being part of a team. How, how was that whole ride, and have you woken up from this dream yet? I mean, me, me and the other teammates are, are still in awe over, over winning. Uh, just, just the fact that later in, in my life I can – go back and say that I won a national championship and that I even pitched in a national championship is just incredible to me. Let's talk about game three because, you know, it, it, obviously U of A is a strong team, as is every team in the College World Series. Bobby Holmes, who was supposed to be for the Cattleers, comes in, uh, I believe, in the bottom of the sixth, the bottom of the seventh, gets a huge strikeout, and then you guys have to, like, basically, you know, wait it out the rest of the way. Beckwith was your number one, and you guys got through it without him in those final innings. So I'm just curious. You're in the bullpen. I'm sure you're ready to go, but where are your nerves? Where's your heart at? Is it up in your throat? I mean, where are you at? Because I'm watching as a spectator, and I have no dog in the fight, and I'm like, how the heck is anyone going to get out of this? I'm, I'm wondering what your mental state was like. I mean... It was quiet in the dugout, uh, the, those last couple innings. Um, at first, we thought Alex Cunningham was just going to come and shut it down. He made it a little interesting. Um, but those last couple innings, man, they were, they were tough to sit through. But uh, he, he did a great job, got the last out, and uh, still can't believe it. Have you won a championship at any other level? Yes. Uh, for high school, I won state championship twice. And that was your, what, sophomore and junior year? Or? It was my eighth grade year. I okay. played up on varsity a little bit and my junior year. So what a lot of people don't know, and I want to get this right. So after your junior year, you had the Tommy John surgery, right? Yes. The summer or the, uh, the fall going into my senior year, I had uh, I was playing at uh, summer ball and I hurt my elbow. I got the surgery in November and uh, and I I'm recovering ever since, but uh, it was definitely difficult. So we see a lot of major leaguers go through that, and even they're still young men, you know, 25, 26 years old. You had it at, I'm assuming, the age of 16, 17, around that area. So what is that like mentally, and do you start to doubt yourself, wondering if maybe this is the end of your baseball life? Uh, no, I, I didn't doubt. Um, I, yes, I was very sad, and, and uh, I was devastated when I heard I had to get the surgery, but... Um, I uh, fortunately got to go to the best uh, surgeon, uh, Dr. Andrews, so I knew I was in good hands and uh, just did the rehab the right way, and I came back positive. Now, a lot of people here, Dr. James Andrews, and I'm assuming you went to Alabama or he came to you, but either way, what's that like when you first meet him? Because a lot of major leaguers go to him. He seems to be the top guy, and it just seems as if he's able to put players at ease. Yes. Uh, He's actually one to not jump right into the surgery. He wants to make sure you actually need it uh, and don't just need a rehab. But uh, I got there, he, was, he knew exactly what he was doing, and uh, I felt very comfortable, and, and uh, sure enough, he did a great job. Now, how comforting was it that after your senior year, the Dodgers drafted you, and did you start to think, all right, well, now I've got some momentum heading into my college career? Yes, uh, the fact that the Dodgers drafted me so uh, high even knowing that I had the surgery, um, it, was very, it was a very good feeling. Um, and I knew going into college that uh, I could uh, definitely come back a, a lot stronger. 
How tempting was it to take that offer, though? They gave you a very lucrative offer, and, you know, for a pitcher that already had Tommy John surgery, you have to now wait another three years and then, you know, possibly a fourth year you could declare twice. But how tempting was it to actually just take the money and figure you could always go back to school and get your education? Well, uh, I had a, my number set pretty high um, just because I thought I could get close to that number um, before the surgery, before I knew I had to get the surgery. And then uh, – uh, I got the surgery, so I wanted to stick with that number. But uh, once I saw that check, or at least heard heard about it, it was it was very tempting to take it. But uh, I wanted to stick with my guns and uh, go to college. How much does it motivate you knowing that you've already had a major league team interested in you, and I'm sure there were other teams motivate you know that that were interested in you, you as well. So you've got a little taste of that going forward in your three years of college until you have to go to the draft and possibly a senior year. How motivating does that get for you? Oh, it, it's it's it motivates me a lot. Uh, knowing that they drafted me that that well, um, even with the surgery, uh, I believe that I can go uh, very good after recovering and uh, coming back stronger. Now let's get to a lighter side. A lot of people don't know exactly where Coastal Carolina is. It's not a Texas. It's not a Rice. Right. It's you know for baseball schools, but you know around Coastal Carolina, where do you find yourself on? I don't know, maybe a Wednesday night or something, not game night. And you know when you're not studying, like where's the place to go? Where are the places to go around Coastal Carolina? Uh, you know, there's uh, there's a bunch of hangout spots. Uh, a couple of the guys have houses that we go hang out with. Um, maybe even occasionally go to the beach at nighttime. Um, it's about it's about what we do. I'd have to – now I'm curious, too, because the whole community, if not the whole country, got behind you guys in your national championship run. What's it like getting off the plane and going back to campus as a champion? Oh, uh, it was it was outstanding. Uh, when we got off the plane, there was about five or 6,000 people waiting at the airport for us, cheering us on. And then uh, driving back all the way to campus, there were people just lined up everywhere um, cheering. And it was, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. All right, Jason, thanks for the time. Starting lineup's coming up right after this.